Hello, uh, Steady and Roblox here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the Humanoid Touched um, event, right? Um, so, to show that what this does, I'm going to just touch some of these parts, and you should be hearing, like, a sort of beeping sound every time I touch it, and down, as you can't see that, hold on, sorry. As you can see here, there are, it tells you what I've touched, so if I go here and I go, it tells you exactly what I've touched here, and it says its name. So if I switch back to here, right, so um, you'd expect that each of these parts would have some kind of script in it, which is making it play a part on the local, play, play a sound, sorry, on the local player's sounds. Because if I go all the way over here, you can still hear the sounds perfectly well because they're played in the player GUI. But they're not actually, there's no scripts in these at all. And I'm going to tell you how I've done that. So let's go into... Um, Roblox Studio, studio. Um, and so as you can see I'm just going to show you none of these have anything in them they're all just normal parts and they're named touch right so I could do anything I could I could make them a different color a different material and they'd still work completely fine as long as they're called touch right I mean if I wanted to I could make ev every single thing that's called that is a that's a part in the whole workspace be um, make that sound, right? But I'm not going to do that because that's stupid. Right, um, so but I'm going to be covering the humanoid touched event, right? Um, and some of the things that you can use the humanoid touched event for are, say you want to have an obby place where there's loads of kill bricks in the place but you don't want to have loads of scripts in every single kill brick because I don't know, maybe it's inefficient or something like that, right? Or you want to know every time the player dies and you want to know everything about the player dying so if you have it managed on the client itself it's a lot easier to do that um, so also this doesn't actually have to have to be managed on the client this can be managed anywhere as long as you have the players humanoid you can do this so um, what I've done here is I have a local script in rep replicated first which means it replicates into every single person's client um, and this has the sound that plays when you touch the brick inside it and all it's doing is it's defining the player, and then it's, uh, and then when the player touches, when the humanoid sorry touches anything, so that means that any of the limbs attached to the humanoid touches something, uh, then it will it will run the function check part right. And the function check part has two variables. It has the part that's, that you've touched, and it has the uh, part of the human that, that has, that's touched the um, that's touched the part. So if you had a custom mesh. So if you had a custom uh, human human um, mesh design thing that wasn't actually the default Roblox human thing, then it would just say what part of that touched it as well, right? I think one of the reasons they've done this is for the new R15, um, what do you call it, uh, body, and uh, they were having problems with collision, so I think this must be something to do with that, because it can show you when something's colliding and when something's not colliding, stuff like that. Um, so, it's very simple, it's just like a normal touched event, apart from the fact that it tells you which limb is being touched, um, and the name of the part that, you, that you've touched, right? So all I'm doing here is I'm saying, if it touches something, then it checks the part's name, so if the part's name is touched, is touched, sorry, then it will make, it will clone the sound in the, un, in the script, you can put it in the player's player GUI, play the sound, and then it'll print the limb that, that's touched and then it will wait the, the wait, the wait the length of the beep sound and then destroy the beep sound. Um, so it's literally just as simple as that. It's it's very, very simple um, thing. Um, so if I literally just go here, yeah, literally that's the whole thing. Um, and the reason I made this a actual tutorial on its own is because I have some other stuff that I want to put in one tutorial so the tutorial, the other tutorial will get too long if I put all of this in that one tutorial. Also, you can read this article on, you can read this, um, re read about this if you want to, on my website by clicking on uh, the link in the description, um, or the link at the end of the, at the at the end of the video. And this just has all of the stuff like the ways you can use it and the arguments and everything like this and and my usage of it and all this stuff, right? Uh, so thanks for watching. I've been studying on. Bye.